This is going to be Psalms chapter 4, and we're going to see some reasons to call on God. There's no reason that somebody shouldn't be talking to God every day, praying without ceasing. It's what Paul says, to pray without ceasing. So number one, a reason to call on God is distress. Psalms 4, one says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast, hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Notice David said, O God of my righteousness. If you're saved, then God has given you the imputed righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, God's mercy mixed with a man's own righteousness got him to paradise in the heart of the earth. But only the righteousness of Jesus Christ and his shed blood could get them to the third heaven. Because all righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God. No man's righteousness was ever good enough to get him to the third heaven. Not even in the Old Testament. Even though it's true that God's mercy mixed with the man's own righteousness got him to paradise in the heart of the earth where he waited for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to be shed so that he could go to the third heaven. David had something different than the other Old Testament saints. He had these sheer mercies of David. He should have died for committing adultery with Bathsheba and having Uriah killed, but he had the sheer mercies of David. And he calls God the God of his righteousness. He knew that he should have been dead. He knew that there was something about him that wasn't good enough. He was calling on the God of his righteousness during his distress. And who better to call on than the one who could give a sinner like you righteousness? And if God can make a sinner like you to be righteous then he can do anything. David says, Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. If you are out in the real world, then you will see why you need the mercy of God. God's mercy is keeping you from something that you deserve. And I deserved hell, but God's mercy kept me from it. I need the mercy of God because of the distresses we face in this world. Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our peril, our sword. We need the mercy of God to get us out of the distress of this life, the temptations, the pain of working a job. If you work like the Bible commands you to do, then most likely you're going to be at work, about to fall over dead at times. Call on God so that He can get you through it. You're going to need to call on God when a loved one dies, or when a spouse leaves, or when a kid is on drug, drugs. Call on God in your present distress. Everyone is going through something, and there is a need for every born-again believer to call on God. Number two, call on God during deception. Psalms 4.2 says, O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. Notice the word selah. Puts you into that second coming, Tom and Jacob's trouble setting. Also notice the word leasing. It has to do with a falsehood or deception. The saints in the time of Jacob's trouble will face the ultimate time of deception. And God himself is going to send a strong delusion, according to Second Thessalonians. The saint today, the born-again believer, is also faced with deception. So when I pray, I pray to God and call on God and say, Don't let me be deceived. I don't want to be deceived by the devil, by preachers, by teachers, by family or friends. Sometimes God will let you be deceived just as a judgment for a sin you've committed. And sometimes you deceive yourself. Uh, you get so far off into some type of a sin, and in your mind you're telling yourself everything's going to be okay. I'm only going to commit this sin one more time. And then that time turns into another time, and that time turns into another time, and you deceive yourself. Pray that you won't deceive yourself. I believe God deceives Bible correctors because they have changed his book and because they deceive others. He lets them keep changing, changing it, thinking that they're right, but they are only building a deeper hole. God will let a man continue to think he's great and not humble him sometimes, just so he will keep deceiving himself. Because Galatians 6, 3 says, For if a man think himself to be something, when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. We all need to pray 
against deception. Uh, Paul continuously says over and over in his epistles, Be not deceived. Be not deceived. It's possible for a Christian to be deceived. It's possible for a Christian to teach and believe heresy. So pray to God you won't be deceived. Pray to God you won't be deceived in your doctrine because there are a lot of false apostles of Christ. Psalms 4.3 says, But know that the Lord hath set, him part, hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. So the Lord set us apart the moment we believe the gospel. And this means we are sanctified. And sanctified means set apart. And we have a daily sanctification where we set aside ourselves to live for God. Not to say stay saved, but just because we want to please him. And number three, call on God about your dreams. So call on God about your distress, about deception, and call on Him about your dreams. Many people suffer from nightmares, night terrors, maybe even sleep paralysis. And God has an answer for all these problems. If you're having trouble sleeping because of fear, then this is a reason to call on God. He'll fix your dreams. He will make you have sweet dreams. Maybe you need to call on God so that you'll be able to sleep and just be able to have a dream. Many people just can't go to sleep at night because they got so much stuff in their head that they can't stop thinking. Their mind just keeps going and going. Psalms 4.4 4 says, Stand in awe and sin not. It's a sin not to be in awe of the Creator. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. Supposedly, if you talk to yourself, then you're crazy. Is what people think. But this says to commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Having trouble sleeping? Do this. But let what you say to yourself follow the guidelines of the Bible. So, uh, Philippians 4 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Ephesians 5.19 says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. If you quit watching horror movies and listening to filthy music, then your mind won't be so clogged up at night before you go to bed. You won't need a nightlight. You'll be so content, the light will just keep you awake. If you get the peace of God, which passeth all understanding then you can sleep through anything, just like Jesus was asleep in the boat until they went down and woke him up. A reason to call on God is for your distress, for deception, and for your dreams. Call on God during distress. Call on God during a time of deception. And call on God about your dreams. Maybe you're having bad dreams. Maybe you're afraid at night. Maybe you just can't go to sleep to even have a dream. These are reasons to call on him. Psalms 4, 8 says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me to dwell in safety. Remember those verses. Memorize them. Quote those to yourself when you go to sleep. Do you want peace? Do you want sleep? Get your heart right with God. Some of you need to spend more time in the Bible and spend less time watching conspiracy theory videos and videos exposing the Illuminati. That stuff is just making you paranoid and making you afraid at night. Uh, get the book out and read it. And meditate on it. Talk to God and talk to yourself about what the Bible says. Uh, get, get it in, that's how you get it in your heart, is by meditating on it. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Don't fear. Put your trust in the Lord. Psalms 4 5 says, Offer the sacrifice of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Uh, God's looking for the sacrifice of righteousness. But for Proverbs 15 8, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to, unto the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. There's a reason to call on God. God's looking for the prayer of the upright, it says it's his delight. And number four, a reason to call on God is just because you're happy. Call on God in your delight. Uh, Psalms 4, 7 says, Thou hast put gladness in mine heart. 
more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. Nehemiah 18, say, 18 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Uh, Paul says, I think myself happy. If you think on the things that Philippians 4 8 said, things that are pure and true, then you're going to think yourself happy. And you need to call on God during these times, and that's how you'll stay happy. Then when trouble comes, you'll already be close to God. And a lot of times people get off track when things are going good, and God has to bring a storm in distress to get them calling on Him again. It's a shame that God has to knock our head off before we get right. Stay right while you're happy, and then when trouble comes, you'll already be close. Stay right when things are going good. Stay right when things are going bad. And stay right when things are going okay. It takes a good man to stay in fellowship with God when things are going good. And that's why rich men have such a hard time and they fall into, into temptation and a snare. When things are going good down here, it can be hard to set your affection up there. So call on God about distress, about deception, and call on Him in your delight. Call on Him about the day of the Lord. Number five, call on him about the day of the Lord. Psalms 4, 6. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. And this is a prayer for the second coming. Malachi 4, 2 says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Lord, lift thou up in the Lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. At the second coming, every eye shall see him. Him whose eyes are like a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his face like the sun. An angry Jesus will be a comfort to a saint wanting out of Jacob's trouble. And an angry countenance on the face of Jesus will be the most terrifying thing a wicked man has ever seen. An angry Jesus looks good if he's on your side, but if he's on your, not on your side, you're in trouble. And I want to be on the friend side of a wrathful son of God. I don't want to be one of his enemies that he threshes in his anger. Call on God about the day of the Lord. The second coming is one of the most neglect, neglected topics today, and that's God's favorite subject in the Bible. That's become my favorite subject in the Bible. I love to talk about the second coming. I love all those verses in the Old Testament about the second coming. I love reading through the minor prophets and underlining all those verses about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to pray for that day. We need to be looking forward to it. Even though it's bitter, it's sweet. It's, it's going to be a sad time because all those people are going to die. But it's also going to be a happy time because... Jesus is coming back to set up his kingdom. And that's what we should want. We should want to be in the millennial kingdom with the Lord Jesus Christ where he's ruling and reigning. And we're not going to have to worry about the corrupt stuff that's going on today. There'll still be sin going on. There'll still be enemies of God there. But it's not going to be like it is today. It's going to be a time of peace. So we should pray for it to be soon. And if the rapture happens today, it'll be just seven more years until we come back with him. That's, that's crazy to think about. If the rapture happened right now, then it's only going to be seven more years and we're going to be coming back with the Lord Jesus Christ on white horses and he's going to set up his kingdom and we're going to be in the millennial kingdom that we've thought about all this time and that's been preached about all this time. At the rapture, he's coming to pick us up and at the second advent, we're coming back with him. We can't come back with him if we've not been taken up first. But this has been Psalms chapter 5 on reasons to call on God.